Like many of the other bills you've heard today, this bill is one step in closing loopholes in our gun safety uh, regulations and making California communities safer. Uh, Senate Bill 1446 will prohibit the possession of large capacity ammunition magazines, defined as ammunition feeding devices holding more than 10 rounds of ammunition, although we know that these magazines can have as much as 100 rounds of ammunition. Uh, Federal law outlawed possession of high capacity magazines as part of the 1994 federal assault weapons ban, but allowed current owners to keep them under a grandfathering provision. And that federal law was allowed to expire in 2014, um, in 20, excuse me, 2004. Um, in 1999, the legislature passed SB 23 which prohibited the possession of assault weapons such as the AK-47 and created a generic definition of an assault weapon, which we tightened the definition of just a moment ago in passing the bill by Senator Hall and Senator Glazer. As part of that legislation uh, of Senator Parada, SB 23, the uh, Importation, manufacture, and sale of large capacity ammunition magazines is prohibited. However, the possession of high capacity magazines is not prohibited. It's the guns that have them on there that are prohibited under current law. This bill prohibits the possession of these high capacity ammunition magazines. Since 1980, there have been at least 50 mass shootings where the shooter used high capacity ammunition magazines. As pointed out earlier by Senator Hall, uh, these magazines are military weapons. They are not designed for hunting or target shooting. They're designed to allow a shooter to fire a large number of bullets in a very short period of time. In these mass shootings, a total of 436 people were killed and an additional 425 were injured. There is actually no consistent collection or reporting of this data, but we know that many of the high profile shootings uh, have, involved high, have involved these high capacity magazines. Uh, the San Bernardino shootings of just a month or so ago and carried out by Siad Farouk and Tafshin Malik, four high capacity magazines were used. A 30 round magazine was used at the Sandy Hook massacre. A 100 round magazine was used at the Aurora movie theater shooting. And a total of four high capacity magazines were found on Jared Longner when he attacked Congresswoman Gabrielle Griff Giffords in Arizona. Um, so uh, many of our cities, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Oakland, Sunnyvale, have already acted and voted to ban high capacity magazines. By banning these weapons statewide, we would be taking a step to preventing future mass shootings and creating safer communities in California. And I would ask for your I vote. With me today are Dr. Kevin Jones, an ER doctor at Sutter Medical Center, uh, Amanda Wilcox from the Brady Campaign, and Ari Freilich from the Law Center to Prevent Gun Violence. Thank you. Uh, I'm Kevin Jones. I'm an emergency physician uh, speaking on behalf of the California chapter of the American College of Emergency Physicians, uh, representing uh, over 3,000 emergency physicians in the state, uh, including our ER colleagues at Arrowhead Regional Medical Center, where I also trained and, and worked for several years and uh, responded to the uh, terrorist attacks in San Bernardino. Um, as emergency physicians, we see the impact of uh, firearm violence on a regular basis. Um, in 2014 alone, uh, we saw nearly 5,000 injuries related to firearms, uh, with California seeing uh, nearly 3,000 deaths. 
um, those numbers increased in 2015. And we see the uh, physical and psychological impact uh, that uh, the firearm violence has. Um, and that physical violence is only increased by these uh, large capacity magazines. Um, and so we, uh, you know, approach uh, this in a way that where we support um, uh, sort of a common sense approach to the possession um, of, of large capacity magazines that are intended to only increase the, the rapid firing and uh, killing capacity uh, of these firearms. And so we ask for your I vote. Amanda Wilcox on behalf of the California chapters of the Brady Campaign to Prevent Gun Violence. This is actually a very narrow bill. Uh, the 99 Assault Weapons Law banned the transfer, importation, um, sale of large capacity magazines. Those who already own them, uh, the magazines, the large capacity magazines were grandfathered in. Um, magazines do wear out of wear out over time and here we are 15 years later and there's still a large a lot of large capacity magazines out there and one of the problems is it's very difficult to determine which magazines were truly grandfathered and which were illegally imported or uh, at the time legally made because um, until until recently a person can buy could buy the parts to repair a magazine and build their own brand new large capacity magazine so it's difficult to enforce the 99 law uh, without banning the actual possession of large capacity magazines. And again, the issue is allowing the rapid fire, the continuous spray of bullets that kills so many people so quickly. And these magazines can be used in long guns and in handguns. This is actually very personal for me. My daughter was killed by a gunman who used um, a large cap capacity magazine. It held 30 rounds. She was shot four times at point blank range. She died with her pen still in her hand. The woman behind her was shot many times and severely injured. Another woman, this was at the Behavioral Health Clinic in Nevada County, uh, was killed. All that happened in a matter of seconds because he could fire 30 rounds very quickly. So I know personally how that rapid fire, continuous fire is so devastating. Every time I think about it, I'm shaken by what happened in Tucson, where that gunman had a 30-round magazine. He was, um, when he was trying to reload, that's when the people there were able to tackle him and stop the shooting. Young Christina Taylor Green, who, like my daughter, had a bright future, <laughs> interested in making a positive difference in the world in her young age, she was killed by the 13th bullet. If it had been a 10-round magazine, she might be alive today. The Sandy Hook shooter, he, re he had large capacity magazines and reloaded, I think, 40 times. 11 children were able to escape when he was reloading. Had he had to reload more times because he only had a 10 round magazine, more people, more kids, more first graders may be alive today. I mean, it's very clear to me that these kinds of magazines do not belong in the hands, particularly of dangerous people, but I'm not sure why they need to be in the hands of any people. And certainly um, hunters, I don't believe, use large uh, capacity magazines uh, to, to kill animals. So we are in strong support of this bill. Thank you. On behalf of the Law Center to Prevent Gun Violence, I echo the comments that have been made already and offer our strong support for the Chairwoman's bill. Uh, these magazines, some capable of holding up to 100 rounds of ammunition, allow a shooter to continue firing large numbers of bullets at numerous targets without reloading. They are the common thread uniting most of the high-profile mass shootings in our country, including the 1989 Cleveland Elementary School shooting in Stockton, California, where the gunman was able to fire 106 rounds in three minutes, uh, shooting 35 children. The 2011 Tucson shooting in which a gunman shot more than 30 rounds and uh, killed or injured 19 victims, including Congresswoman Giffords, in the span of 15 seconds. The 2012 Aurora movie theater shooting where a gunman shot 70 people in less than 10 minutes. And the 2012 Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting in which a gunman fired 154 rounds and killed 26 teachers and first graders in less than five minutes. In many of these incidents, the shooter was ultimately subdued only when he finally paused to reload.
Laws limiting the availability of these magazines reduce the capacity for firepower and thus the potential lethality of firearms used to perpetrate these shootings. And in fact, studies have shown that in mass shootings where these magazines were used, more than twice as many victims were shot and 57% more victims were killed compared to mass shootings where the gunmen used conventional magazines. And quickly to anticipate our opponent's comments, laws prohibiting the possession of these magazines have been repeatedly upheld in the federal courts, most recently by the Ninth Circuit of Court of Appeals in Fioc v. Sunnyvale, which recently upheld Sunnyvale's magazine, large capacity magazine ban, noting that the city presented credible evidence that the magazines are disproportionately used in mass shootings, as well as crimes against law enforcement, and ruled that the city maintained a strong interest in protecting the public against their potential use. California, is also strongly, California voters also strongly agree. A January 2016 California field poll confirmed that a strong majority of voters in our state support efforts to rid all California communities of these magazines. We thank the chairwoman for introducing this important legislation and urge you to vote aye. Do we have other witnesses in support? Lady Bourne representing the American Academy of Pediatrics in strong support. Sylvia Solis Shaw on behalf of the City of Los Angeles, Mayor Eric Garcetti, and on behalf of the City of Santa Monica, both in strong support. Thank you. Alex Gibbs on behalf of the City of Oakland. We're talking about a situation where uh, a hundred round magazine was used in the Aurora Theater, leaving, I think it was 60 people dead. Um, we're talking about 14 people killed and 21 injured with 30 round magazines in San Bernardino, California. Uh, we are talking about uh, every life that we can save by prohibiting the possession of these high capacity magazines is a family that is not torn apart. And communities that are safer. I would note that a recent PPIC survey found that 57% of the people in California are concerned about the threat of a mass shooting in their community. Think about simply the peace of mind of realizing that we have a big loophole here. We prohibit importation, manufacture, and sale uh, of these magazines and guns, but possession of the high capacity magazines is a glaring loophole. We, we closed a little bit of it by prohibiting the conversion kits or repair kits, which were used to convert, uh, convert guns to high capacity uh, magazine guns, and we can do this now. It is not a taking. We allow guns to be sent out of state, to be sold out of state, or they can be turned in to law enforcement. And I would note that of the communities that have already passed these bans, uh, Sunnyvale and San Francisco, the preliminary injunctions were denied by the courts, which found that narrowly, that dealing with these high capacity magazines narrowly tailored to a compelling government interest in public safety, uh, they would not impose a preliminary injunction. I believe that this will, this will stand, and I believe that we will not eliminate gun ownership for responsible people, but we will be giving a sensible safeguard to our families and our children in mostly public places where they congregate. And I would ask for your aye vote. Hancock? Aye. Hancock, aye. Anderson? No. Anderson, no. Glazer? Leno? Aye. Leno, aye. Lou? Monning? Aye. Monning, aye. Stone? No. Stone, no. Motion is to pass to appropriations. Glazer? No. Glazer, no. Lou? Aye. Lou, aye.